Hello everyone, I'm Reza Tangesani and this series of video I'm going to explain what is explicit model in Abacus. Before starting, I just wanted to mention it is very important for you guys to download the CAE file from our website. So by having this CAE file and this video, you can follow our tutorial and then you can apply it in your model and you can learn better. Okay, as an introduction, at first we're going to explain what is the difference between the explicit and the implicit model. After that, we're going to talk about approaches to increase their computational efficiency. However, the main focus of this video is talking about the mass scaling in explicit model for have a better understanding we're going to talk more about the fundamental aspect of the mass scaling in explicit and also we're going to talk about the criteria that we're going to use to analyze the accuracy of a model with using mass scaling so first of all we're going to talk about the explicit and implicit model what are these models first of all as you can see uh, there are two type of uh, models, explicit and implicit. In the upper picture, you can see the model that we can use with implicit model, and the lower picture, the models are for explicit. But usually, the implicit models are small and they are very easy to solve. But explicit contains explosive uh, models and very large deformation. To have a better understanding, in an explicit model like this man is gonna fa uh, solve the model with more complexity and. Uh, for fast deformation for example for forging you might need to use explicit model and if you have explosion or element deletion it's better to use explicit model but for implicit as you can see in this like this man it's think more the formulation behind the elements are more complicated but the increment time are larger so you can use it for uh, larger step times however the model can have long time process it might have simple contact and also it's almost close to the static models so now there's a question how we can make the explicit model faster as we described the explicit model are good for a uh, small increment time so we need to increase the time efficiency so there are two main approaches that we can use first of all is decreasing the processing time and the other one is increasing the increment time i mean by increasing the increment time make the, making them larger here i'm gonna explain how it works in explicit model increment time is based on this formulation as you can see le is the length of the element cd is this formula so if you make it more uh, simplified you can see that for material with higher density and lower young modulus and also with larger element size you're gonna have the larger increment time so somehow if you can increase this value you can increase your increment time which leads to decreasing the number of the increments which makes your model faster okay first of all changing the step time this is the approach that we're going to explain the next video but here just uh, having a brief desc description you can make your model faster for example if a process is 30 seconds in real uh, life you you can simulate it at the one second in your simulation so by doing this you will need less number of increment which leads to less computational time this approach is not the purpose of this video and we're going to talk about it later but the most important one is increasing the material density by increasing the material density as we describe in the formula you can increase the increment time so you can have faster model and somehow you can scale your density or your math to increase the size of increment okay so now we can talk about the mass scaling model here you can see a model that we didn't use a mass scaling option in the explicit model punch model is simulated and the stress deformation is good and you can see everything is very constant here you can see the difference between the kinematic and the internal energy it's very important to analyze our model but as you can see the internal energy is way larger than the kinematic energy if you compare this with the model with mass scale you can see there is a much different but even if we use the factor 10 for mass scaling which makes our model the root of 10 times faster but there isn't a big difference between these two models but also you can see the difference between the stress dis distribution in the model 
there is very important that uh, the starting point and the ending point of your model is smooth for your internal energy otherwise your model is might not be accurate so you can see even by using the mass scaling option it is a smooth and it is very important to uh, note that the difference between the kinematic and the internal energy should be less than five percent so it means that the most of the energy is internal it's not dynamic so if it is um, larger than five percent it means that your model is based on the mass so changing the mass might affect your model if it is less than five percent it means that the mass doesn't have a significant effect on your model so you can use mass scaling to make your model faster so these are the two important factors that you need to consider okay and the last point you can see the difference between the mass scaling and without mass scaling the difference is not significant the, uh, the color is different because of the different value for each color but the values are close and you can also see the difference between these two models which are close shows that uh, using mass scaling didn't affect our model in real study you can use the mass scaling and just you need to apply those two important factors considering less five percent for your kinematic energy compared to in internal energy and it should be a smooth from the for the starting point and the ending point of your model okay now we can go to the model as you can see the job is completed and you now you can see the results this is for the model with mass scaling if we go to job 3 it is the model without mass scaling if we wanted to see the internal and the kinem um, kinematic energy we can go to here OD history output and here you can see a l i e and the one with KE. If you select both of them and click on plot, you can see the difference between the kinematic and the internal energy is uh, pretty much same because punch was moving without pressing the part. Uh, after pressing and deforming the material, one with internal energy and start to increase. With increasing the deformation, you can see the ALLIE is increased more. And after that was finished, it's almost constant. And if you go to other one, you can see the same results uh, but with a little more different uh, i just wanted to show you the results to show you that both works correctly and now i think it's pretty much okay for the mass scaling uh, next video i'm gonna talk about for more options i hope you can you enjoy this video until the next one bye